Welcome to our exciting new video devoted to the Acronis Cyber Infrastructure. As you remember, Acronis Cyber Infrastructure represents a new generation of the so-called hyper-converged infrastructure targeted at both managed service providers and end customers. It is a scale-out, cost-efficient, and multi-purpose cyber protection solution that combines universal storage and high-performance virtualization. Deployed at Acronis data centers worldwide, Acronis Cyber Infrastructure stores more than 200 petabytes of data that's been backed up for more than 125,000 servers, PCs, and mobile devices. It should be noted that Acronis Cyber Infrastructure is integrated with both Acronis Backup and Acronis Backup Cloud. In this video, we'll show you step-by-step -step how a managed service provider can set up a storage for storing and managing their customers' backups for the Acronis Backup Cloud. However, Corresponding steps to be done for the Acronis backup are similar. So let's get started. We assume that you already have an administrative account for the Acronis Cyber Infrastructure. Moreover, you created a partner account for the Acronis Backup Cloud and have all the required credentials for it. Let's log into the Acronis Backup Cloud and navigate to Settings and then Locations. Here you can see all the storages registered and used for backup services provided to end customers. The column Inherited Storage indicates whether the storage is owned by the current service provider or provided by a parent service provider. As a next step, you need to configure a new storage for storing and managing backups for your customers within the Acronis Cyber Infrastructure Admin Panel. Thus, log in to the Acronis Cyber Infrastructure and navigate to Storage Services, and then Backup Storage. Here you can see all the nodes in the storage cluster that can be used as backup destinations. Select the desired node or nodes, and press the Create Gateway button. In the right pop-up panel, you can assign one of the available types to the selected storage, that is, Acronis Cyber Infrastructure Cluster, Network File System, or Public Cloud. The option Acronis Cyber Infrastructure Cluster implies the customer's data will be stored and managed on the nodes you included in the storage cluster previously. In turn, the option Network File System means the cluster will be used as a proxy to a NAS. In this case, the customer's data will be stored and managed on the corresponding NAS. Finally, the option Public Cloud implies that the storage will be used as a proxy to a public or private cloud. It should be noted that the Acronis Cyber Infrastructure supports many public clouds such as Amazon S3, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud, and Alibaba Cloud. Moreover, it supports also storages in private clouds. Thus, if you select the option Public Cloud, your customer's data will be stored and managed in the corresponding public or private cloud. Let's select Acronis Cyber Infrastructure Cluster. As the next step, you need to select an appropriate type of network adapter, that is, a public or private one. Since your customers are scattered over various geographical locations, you might want to back up your customer's data via a public internet network. Thus, make sure that the public gateway is enabled under Infrastructure Networks. In turn, at the stage of creating a gateway, you need to check that each node has at least one interface for private and public gateway networks. Press the Next button to proceed to the next step. As the next step, you need to select the Erasure coding scheme that will be applied to your customer's backups. For instance, 
The erasure coding scheme 3 plus 2 implies that the customer's data will be split into three fragments and two parity fragments will be added to them. Thus, this erasure coding scheme requires a minimum of five nodes in the backup storage cluster. We recommend selecting the highest redundancy mode possible on your cluster and the failure domain host. Press the next button to proceed to the next step. As the next step, you need to specify a DNS name that will be associated with the selected cluster and used to register the cluster within the Acronis Backup Cloud. This DNS name is especially beneficial if you have many clusters and if you would like to use a more user-friendly DNS name instead of a tricky string of numbers. The new DNS name will be associated with each node IP address of the selected cluster. The selection of a specific node for the backup operations takes place automatically by the backup agent. It depends on a number of factors such as node availability and node load. Please notice that the DNS name should be configured in an appropriate DNS service. For example, Azure DNS for Azure, Amazon Route 53 for Amazon, and Google Cloud DNS for Google. We strongly recommend configuring the DNS name in one of your favorite DNS services. If it is not possible due to some reasons, you have to manually register the DNS name on each machine in the host's system file. Press the Next button. As the next step, you need to specify the URL address of your instance of Acronis Backup Cloud. By default, it is https cloud.acronis.com. In turn, if you use Acronis Backup, at this stage, you should use the IP address of the corresponding machine to access the backup management console. You need to provide also a login and password for your partner account for the Acronis Backup Cloud or admin account for your Acronis Backup. Press the next button. The deployment process will be initiated immediately. As soon as it is over, you will see three tabs, Overview, Nodes, and Geo-Replication. On the Overview tab, for example, you can see the information about the registered gateways and their performance. As the next step, log into the Acronis Backup Cloud and navigate to Settings, and then Locations. Make sure that the system created a new backup destination within the corresponding name derived from the DNS name. As the next step, you need to create a new customer and assign a new backup destination to it within the Acronis Backup Cloud. Thus, press the New button in the upper right corner and select Customer. Specify the customer name, production mode, and language. Press the Next button to proceed to the next step. Select the services you would like to provide to the new customer, for example, Acronis Backup Cloud. And then press the Next button. Specify customers' devices and workloads that are required to back up such as servers, workstations, mobile devices, and Office 365 mailboxes. In the section Cloud Resources, select the newly created storage in the drop-down box. Press the Next button to proceed to the next step. Complete all the remaining information such as the customer's email, language, first and last names, and press the Done button to complete the whole process. Finally, let's have a look at the monitoring capabilities of Acronis Cyber Infrastructure. Thus, switch back to the Acronis Cyber Infrastructure and navigate to Storage Services and then Backup Storage. Here you can see the information about the deployed backup storage cluster and its performance. Moreover, you can get the information about geo-replication of the selected gateways, as well as the data migrated from legacy versions of Acronis Cyber Infrastructure. Finally, you can get the information about the storage used in public clouds, such as Amazon S3, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud, and Alibaba Cloud. Navigate to Monitoring, and then Dashboard. Here you can get the information about the selected cluster for the last 30 minutes, one, 
6, and 12 hours, and for the last 7 days. The information displayed includes the reading and writing operations, chunk services health, and the physical and logical space usage. You can get more fine-grained information by pressing the Grafana dashboard button in the upper right corner. The backup-specific information is presented on two dashboards, Acronis Backup Gateway and Acronis Backup Gateway Details. First, you can get the information about the rate limiting and ingress throttling. If this chart is not empty, it means the underlying storage lacks free space and the backup gateway is throttling user requests to slow down the data flow. In this case, it is advisable to add more storage space to the cluster to resolve the issue. Second, you can get information about the append rate and append latency. The append rate chart displays the backup data flow from the backup agents to the storage in operations per second. It can be used to identify a situation where there are too many backups uploading at the moment. In this case, it is advisable to reschedule the backups to equal times. In turn, the append latency chart shows the time spent on processing requests. It averages several tens of milliseconds with peak values below one second. This chart can be used to identify a situation where the underlying storage has low performance. Third, you can get information about the migration and replication throughput. It can be used to track the status of data moving out of the storage. In normal situation, the replication chart mirrors the ingress bandwidth chart. Finally, you can get the information about the memory allocation for the conducted backup operations. It can be used to identify possible problems with high memory usage. Well, that's it with setting up a Cronus backup storage. Are you excited about the capabilities of Cronus cyber infrastructure? You have an opportunity to try our easy, efficient, and secure cyber protection solution right now. Just go to our website at www.acronus.com and download a trial version of the Acronis cyber infrastructure. Please notice the trial version is actually a full-fledged version with all functionality and no time constraints. The only limitation is that you only get one terabyte of storage capacity for storing your data of your customers. Have fun!